Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. So on today's video I have this Ford Mondeo. This is the uh, state version. I'm um, just doing another work at the back which is why I got this paper on my ears because I was banging with a hammer and I don't want to damage my ears. Um, anyway so I'm gonna be changing the oil and the oil filter. Also I'm going to show you where to top up some screen wash fluid uh, we're going to check the coolant, coolant percentage, um, antifreeze percentage, um, and that will be it. So, um, to start with this, <clears throat> I'm going to show you where to um, top up the screen wash fluid. That basically goes here once you get your bonnet open. If you get this little cover out, that's where we're gonna put some screen wash fluid. So let me get that. So I've got my screen wash fluid here. Make sure you use the proper stuff. Um, I normally buy the concentrated one and mix it myself, but you could also buy the ready mixed and just pour it in there. Uh, but just make sure you do buy the correct fluid for it. So this fluid will, uh, will not freeze in winter when temperatures are minus whatever or zero because if you only if you only put water in there um, that is going to freeze and then you won't have any <clears throat> any of the fluid coming out to clean your windscreen and you're gonna find out when you need it the most <laughs> So better have it there ready um, and avoid any issues. Uh, I think this color is not sitting properly. Kind of supposed to lock into place. There, okay. That's nicely locked now. Um, and just in case you're wondering what this is, this is for the power steering fluid, um, which I can see in there. You can just you can just see the lines in here. You have a minimum and a maximum. This is at the moment in between the min and the max, which is okay. Um, if you wanted to check that. Um, right, so moving on to the coolant. The coolant is in this tank. I'm just going to open this cover. Just uh, open this very carefully if the car has been running. So no boiling water jumps out into your face. Um, these are made for safety. That's why we have to turn it a million times to open it. But if they fail, then uh, that could be a problem and you don't want to get burned so i'm just gonna get my light okay so i'm just shining the light in there so you can see there's a sort of pink orangey uh, color of antifreeze in there and also it is shining quite a lot in there but there it's a line and it says max. So that little line there is your max. This is just a little bit above the max. It's shining a little bit too much, but you can just about make out where it is. So that's okay. I don't have any issues with that. Um, but. If you didn't have any fluid in there, then uh, that's when we start getting uh, concerned. <laughs> um, and obviously, if this was empty, then you want to find out why. And there might be a coolant leak somewhere, which could mean anything, really. It could be the water pump, it could be the radiator. It's just a number of things. So it's a good idea to often check level um, 
to make sure everything is okay. Now, I'm just gonna use this little gadget here to measure the percentage of antifreeze, at which point this um, liquid here, this antifreeze, would actually freeze. So we just suck a little bit of uh, the water in there. Make sure it fills up properly. But lately, this uh, my little machine here hasn't been working properly. At the moment, it's showing me minus five. But uh, ideally, we want it to have we want to have it about about minus twenty. Um, now it could be that somebody changed the coolant and just didn't put enough coolant in there. Because uh, obviously, if we have a minus ten then this will freeze and we don't want that either. So a little gadget like this will help you measure the percentage of antifreeze that's in there. Because sometimes obviously we mix 50% water, 50% antifreeze or 70% antifreeze, 30% water. Depends where you live. If it's really cold and freezing, temperatures minus 20, minus 25, you definitely want to have more antifreeze. So that is showing around minus five. Uh, I'm not really that happy with that. So I'll have to, in any case, I would have to drain the coolant and refill it. But before I do that, I need to make sure my gadget here is working properly because I have had a few cars I've checked and this has been reading really low, so it may have fulfilled its life. But I'm not 100% sure. And so, if you're happy with that, you can go ahead and close it. For the time being, I'm happy with that. It's okay. We're going into summer. Sort of. Um, we had snow today. <laughs> and it was quite cold. So I'm saying that, have to be careful. Um, right, now we can move on to doing the uh, oil and oil filter. So to start, I'm going to just pull the dipstick here and open the oil filler cap here, if I can. It's a little bit tight. Okay, there we are. Just gonna leave that seat in there and this one as well. Uh, if you're working outside, um, just make sure that is not completely open so nothing goes in there. Um, and now, gonna get the car up, gonna drain the oil from underneath and remove the filter. Um, I have, I warmed up the engine a little bit to do that, but not too much. Um, it's just warm really just to allow the oil to come out a little bit faster. Okay, so looking at the car from underneath, we have the oil filter just sitting here and the sun plug bolt is just sitting here. And we need a 13 mil for that. And make sure you get an oil pan. And also if your car has been running a lot, that oil can be very hot. So be careful not to burn yourself. Probably best to put an extension here because this uh, ratchet, the head of it, is just touching this pipe here. Just, just a little bit annoying, but I can just about open this here. Let that oil come out. So, while that is draining, we can also open the oil filter here. Just make sure your uh, oil pan is sitting underneath. So I'm gonna be using one of these. This is a 36 mil socket. Quite a big one. And hopefully that's not going to be 
too tight in there. <clears throat> but there will be oil coming out of there. So just uh, open it slowly. On some of these you can just open open the center release all the oil and then uh, which I think in this one you can but I think you need to have a tool for that I'm not sure really but anyway I already opened it so let's do it here yeah. the messy way You can let it drip for a little a few minutes or so, so it can drain a bit. Unless you're in a mad rush, of course. Okay, there we are. So we filter there. It's just plugged in there, so we need to uh, unplug it. But I'm gonna let it drain for a little while before unplugging it. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna let that drip there for a little while. Um, and then uh, we can refit our new filter and refit the sunplug bolt. So while that's dripping, we can prepare our filter. Okay, so this is my new filter. The one I'm using that make Stark. This is the uh, old one here, just gonna pull that out, <coughs> if I can. <coughs> okay, just a little bit tight. Just put that through there and pull it out against the casing. It's a bit hard to pull really, it shouldn't be that hard. Okay, now we're also going to remove the O-ring. Just going to clean that a little bit. Your ring. Just make sure it goes in the correct group. Filter. Filter just supposed to plug in there. Okay. 
Okay, so that needs to just plug in there. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of grease around the O-ring here. Now we are ready to fit our filter and put our sunplug bolt back. Sunplug bolt goes in there. Filter goes up here. So I'm just gonna screw that in by hand. Make sure it's going in the correct direction. And you might be able to see there, it says, it says 25 Newton meters. If you have a torque hinge, you can use that otherwise. Just feel okay. Now we're going to close our sunplug bolt as well. Some plug bolts normally you close them to about uh, 10, 10 to 15 newton meters. This really depends on the car. Okay, with that done, just clean the area if you have any oil drips there. So if you have any any oil leaks in the future, you know they're not from there and then you can obviously find out where they're from. So with that done, um, I'm gonna lower the car and we can top up some oil. Okay, so we are ready to top up some oil. So this uh, model takes uh, six liters. Um, I already added five, just so we don't have to be watching there when I add five liters. Um, so I got five here. I'm using this uh, mobile super 5W30. Um, this car has got 130,000 miles now. So I've got one more liter to put. Got one liter here. And there we are. Our six liters are in. Can close this cover now. And we can check the dipstick as well. The dipstick is just here. I'm gonna push it back in, take it out. And uh, I don't know if that is very visible, but the oil is, let's try to focus a little bit, somewhere up here. You can just about see the shine. So I'm gonna clean that because it's a little bit dirty. But, Okay, let's have a look at that again. So we have our marks here. We have the minimum down here, the maximum up here. At the moment, we're a little bit, we're over the max. Um, once we run the engine, 
that oil should go into the oil filter housing. And so this will go then down to the max line there. So try to focus and just put it back in there. So it's just, it's just where the max written is at the moment. So it's above the, where we want it. We want it here. We want it there, but it's a little bit up there. That will go down once we run the car. And now um, we can start the car. Let's make sure it's not in gear. Okay, all lights are out. And it's running very sweet. So that's pretty much it. So I hope this video helps. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.